We're going to um, kind of move a different direction today. We're going to start to look at uh, detailed architectural systems. So up until this point, you've kind of been focusing on simplified geometries in order to understand the logic of the system. Um, so now that you are starting to develop an expertise of the logic, now we're going to start looking at the complexity and really getting into what Grasshopper does best, which is providing a, an insane amount of detail in your model with relatively little effort. Um, so to do this, we're going to start off by um, we're going to start off by uh, modeling like a panelized system, much like a, a curtain wall system. So I'm going to give you a simplified curtain wall, but we're going to keep adding on more and more detail so that you understand. Um, you know, how to make things that are truly um, impressive. So uh, let's go to the front view. And um, actually, it doesn't really matter which view you go to. I'm just going to make a um, something like this little tower thing. The scale doesn't really matter that much. Just remember that I'm working in feet. So I think you should be working in feet as well. <coughs> um, and I am going to explode this thing. and reference one of these surfaces. So I'll reference this one right here. Okay. Um, so we're gonna keep this study relatively um, simple in terms of the geometry so that you can understand the, the complexity of the system. And then we're gonna get a little bit more co uh, complex in terms of the geometry so that it doesn't feel like you're being overwhelmed with what's happening. So um, we're going to do a, a subdivision, and then we're going to work on one panel of that subdivision. So much like you've been working on so far already on your projects, we're going to use a divide domain squared. And we're going to um, subdivide that surface like this. Say 0, less than 20. do, I don't know, five or six horizontal subdivisions and two to five vertical, or two to three vertical ones. Yeah, that'll work. <coughs> okay. Um, let me go back to um, Rhino real quick, and I'm going to hide the layer I'm working on. Cool. And uh, I'm going to go to list item and I'm going to grab one item. So list item here, doesn't matter which one, I'll just work on that one. So I'm going to turn this stuff off and I'm just going to work on this one panel. So this little guy right up here is my one panel. So the stuff we're going to be doing is, um, you know, specific to the, the boundary of this panel. Um, so we're going to create like a, a, a slightly smaller frame, but we're going to get specific about our dimensions. Um, the, uh, how do I want to describe this? Well, we're going to do, let's go to um, math domain and let's pull in a construct domain squared. And we're going to pull in another ISO trim. Okay, and we're going to be, for now, we're going to work off of the, the main surface, or the, the singular surface, the one panel that we pulled. Um, and what you're going to notice here, and this is where we're going to kind of change things up a little bit. Zero is less than, let's say, um, 20. And let's make, let's just make two of these so you can see it. You don't have to actually do this, I just want you to see it. So, so here's what's important. Um, we have a U minimum of zero, and then we can set it to a U minimum of one, um, or we can like slide the maximum slider. So if I want a one inch border around this whole thing, what do I have to do? Anybody? Yeah. Two more sliders, of course, yes. But what do I have to do to make sure that this thing is one inch from both sides? Like if I'm just trying, right now I'm just worried about you, and I want it to be one inch from the left side, and I want it to end one inch from the right side. You 
could nope. uh, put a, a, a subtraction uh, uh, mode or something? Yes. Subtracted from what? From the edges of it. One inch of... Yes, the length of the edge. Right. Correct. So what we're going to do here is we're going to take this system and we're going to measure the length of the edge of this panel. And then we're going to subtract that distance from it. Okay, so we're going to say we're going to go one inch. Uh, well, let's, let's actually just do it this way. So uh, I'm going to do a static number of one. Okay, so we're going to say... Um, Actually, let's do this as, well, I'm going to show you the map instead of doing an expression. So we're going to do 1 divided by 12. Yeah, so the value is going to come out at 0 0.0833 repeating. Um, so that is going to be our 1 inch from the left side. So if you look at it down here, that is 1 inch. Um, one inch from the bottom is going to be here. So now we have one inch from the left side, one inch from the bottom, and we've got to find how we get one inch from the right. Um, so now we're going to have to sort of break this thing up and start to look at the geometry, um, at the geometry's length. So we're going to start reading information off of, off of this geometry. So let's go to surface analysis, deconstruct BREP. Okay, so this gives us um, our first analysis component. Um, trying to think how I want to do. Let's do this because I don't want to. I don't want to have to break this apart later. So I'm going to say this is going to be my little conduit there and there. Okay, so um, you guys know why I did this. Sort of. Um, so basically, I did that so that instead of um, instead of having to reconnect multiple pieces whenever I want to switch from my singular system to my multiple system, I can just plug it in and do multiple. Okay. So now I can replug that in, and I'm working on a singular system. That'll become more important later. But um, so here I've got my uh, edges. So I need to find the right edge to measure to get that value. So we're going to do another couple of list items. So I'm going to say set list item. I'm going to grab this edge. Um, and we're going to use static numbers for this one. So I think it's going to be like a 2. But we'll see. Um, turn these off. Okay, so this one grabbed the top edge, which is helpful. Um, and then I'm going to have to also grab the um, the bottom edge. So that was a 2, and the bottom edge might be a 0 or a 3. Jeremy, it's a 0. Did you say why you uh, put that surface in there? Yes. This surface is so I can switch from the multiple panel system okay. to the singular panel system with ease. <coughs> okay, so now these are my um, top edge <coughs> and my bottom edge. You guys are following so far? Don't worry, it'll make sense in a moment. Um, so there's a, then we're going to go to um, curve analysis and we're going to say curve length. So that measures how long the um, bottom edge is. It's 8.5262. Copy that, put it down here. And then the top edge is the same, 8.5262. Um, so those values are going to be used to inform my um, length. It's pretty simple. Um, so we've got, let me hide some of this information too. Hide some of that, keep this on. Um, so basically we have uh, the edge is being created here saying um, one inch from the left, one inch from the right, but now we need to give it a, a value to go to the right. So um, that's going to be um, 8.5262 
uh, that's measured in feet right now, um, minus one inch. So it's going to be minus uh, 0 0.0833. So we can pull this back a little bit, give ourselves a little bit of room to work, and go to math, operators, subtraction, and we're going to say for the um, bottom edge, which is uh, the right-hand side, so we're going to the right edge, bottom edge one, two, three. yeah okay so we're just gonna pull one I think we only need one of these the top edges we don't want the top edge actually I lied um, so we want the bottom edge and we want the um, let's go like a side side edge this is gonna be a one Um, so that's going to be a little longer. So the U value is the width of this thing. So we're going to use the bottom edge to measure it. That's this. So we're going to say, um, whoops, it's going to be that minus this. Okay, so that's, that's the overall length of the bottom edge minus one inch should give us a value of one inch over here. See that? Make sense? And then um, we can do the same thing down here. That's going to give us the top edge. Okay. Um, now, you're going to look at this and say, okay, well, if I did this in Rhino, there's a much easier way of doing it, right? It's just offset. You're familiar with that? Okay. So the, the challenge with offset is that you have to make sure it's a closed curve, and oftentimes, well, you, you, yeah, you do kind of have to make sure it's a closed curve. And oftentimes, um, it will, in an overall system, kind of give you errors. So I'm just going to show you what that overall system would have looked like. So let's go to um, deconstruct VREP. And you don't have to do this. I just want to show you this, OK? So we're going to go to deconstruct VREP on the whole system. So we have sets of edges that are in groups of four. I'm going to go to um, join curves, plug that in, preserve direction. We're going to um, plug that in as uh, true. Hopefully that'll actually fix it, but that's one way of doing it. Um, and then we're going to go to um, curve analysis, uh, or I'm sorry, um, curve utility. We're going to do offset. Plug this in. And so here is the problem. We have um, one surface that offset to the outside and another surface that offset to the inside. Okay, unfortunately there isn't really a great fix for that that I've found yet. Um, so, I don't know, maybe on YouTube somebody will comment something pretty awesome. Um, but that's this is my workaround to kind of get around that. Now this will work on quadrilateral systems. Quadrilateral systems, okay. That's important to understand. Um, it will not work when you start doing like warped planes and stuff like that, so. Um, Let's get rid of that. Okay, so uh, what questions do you have before I start moving into um, the overall system? Yeah, yeah, anybody? Uh, yeah. Uh, I got a, well, I got a hard time to You got a what? I don't know. Oh, okay, I'll, I'll come troubleshoot with everybody before we move on. Okay.